Okay, let's take a look at what the end behavior of power functions is gonna look like. And sometimes this is referred to as long run behavior. So think of those as being synonymous as you're working through homework and problems, end behavior and long run behavior. So we kind of have two different situations that could occur. We could have even power functions or we could have odd power functions. So the graphs of even power functions on the left-hand side, you'll notice that the tails go the same direction. Now these differ slightly depending on what the power is. As you can see, our green graph here is the x squared. So between negative one and positive one, it's gonna be a little bit higher up, not quite as close to the x-axis as these higher powers. And it's not gonna be quite as vertical on the extremes on the outsides. However, the big thing we wanna get down is that the tails go the same direction on both sides. As the exponents get bigger on the insides between negative one and positive one, it's, it's a little bit closer to the x-axis down here. And on the extremes, it's a little bit more vertical. All right, with odd power functions, the graphs over here on the right-hand side, you're gonna notice that the tails go opposite directions. So on these graphs, it's always just a one out in front of each one of these as its leading coefficient. You're gonna notice that it goes up to the right and down to the left-hand side. And kind of that same comparison as far as in between negative one and positive one, um, the higher the exponent, the closer it's gonna to be to the x-axis in here. And then on the outside, the larger the exponent, the more vertical it's gonna be. Don't worry too much about that. Just get down even power functions, tails go the same direction. Typically they go up and odd power functions, they go opposite directions. Typically it's up to the right and down to the left. But let's take a look at if we change around that coefficient out in front. For a positive, we get the situation that's going on here. Same as those ones we saw up above. But if we get a negative constant out in front, um, that's gonna work as a reflection. So it takes the, the end behavior, what's going on here, and it flips this entire graph upside down. Same thing with if you have a negative sitting out in front, it takes our original graph and it flips everything upside down so the tails go the opposite direction. Okay, you'll notice that we also have our long run behavior or end behavior modeled using this arrow notation underneath there. Let's use this arrow notation on this next one to describe the end behavior, what's gonna happen for x to the eighth power. And we'll, then we'll do it with an odd one in a second. So x to the eighth power, that's gonna be even. First thing to note on this. And really all we care about is what happens at the extremes. Okay, the tails are gonna go the same direction because it's an even power function. And this one hasn't been flipped upside down. So the tails are gonna go up in both directions. One way we can describe this using that arrow notation is we can say as our x values approach infinity, what that means is as we travel along the graph off to the right hand side as our x values get bigger and bigger and bigger as they approach infinity, as we're traveling along the graph, we wanna know what happens. Our y values are gonna go up and up and up. So we say they approach positive infinity. Basically, when you see an arrow, you can say approach in the same spot. So what happens to the left-hand side? As x approaches negative infinity, that means as we go very negative in the x direction, off here to the left-hand side, and you trace along your graph, what happens to the y values? Well, in this case, the y values continue to go up. And for y values, positive infinity is up. We're gonna use this um, end behavior as well as when we start graphing polynomial functions, we're gonna to have to know what happens with these tails with the end behavior. So to the right, as x approach positive infinity, we went to positive infinity for y. The left end behavior as we approach negative infinity for x, we went to positive infinity for y. Last one on this video, let's take a look at negative x to the ninth power. Now this is an odd exponent, so that's one thing to take note of. Normally, um, the right side goes up, and the left side goes down when you're trying to graph these. However, this has a negative out in front, so instead of the right side going up, the right side goes down. Instead of the left side going down, the left side goes up. <clears throat> so this is just kind of a basic sketch of what's going on here. Now let's use our arrow notation. On this one, as x approaches infinity, so that means as we go off to the right-hand side, and follow along our graph, you can see that our y values are gonna go down. 
So we say that y goes to a negative infinity. And along the left-hand side, as we say our x values go to negative infinity, that means as we travel off to the left-hand side along our graph, follow it along and our y values go up. So we'd say that is y goes to positive infinity. So you go to the left, the left-hand behavior, the y values are getting bigger and bigger going up to positive infinity. All right, hope this helps out as you're trying to determine end behavior and understand this arrow notation. It's really not that bad, but you just need to be careful about uh, which direction they're telling you to, to follow. All right, hope this helps. Good luck.